Welcome to Norfolk's Exploration, and today we're back in the shop right next to the wheel horse. And we're going to be building, I, you might be able to tell what it is right now, actually, a cultivator. Yep, this is kind of the new workhorse that we've adopted here. So, this is our second implement. We got the disc over there. In the background. But today's project, cultivator, we got nine inch S tines that we ordered, and then built some teeth. And uh, we're working on the bars and the hitch receiver now. So it shouldn't take too long. We might be able to use it by the end of today. Yeah, which you're all stay tuned for that. All right, welcome to the video. Although you're probably a little bit ways into the video. This is what I got here. You guys definitely should know what this is. This is our s tine, And uh, in this segment, I'm building the teeth. Now, it's just a piece of... Uh, inch and a half flat bar. That I've got two holes in and I'm thinking they're gonna go Kind of like this so it should be Somewhat like that that way you can flip them over if one side gets dull and you can sharpen them later So uh, I got seven of these to make one down Let's see if we can do this pretty fast got six here that we need seven total i have one already done and now we've got to put an edge on them or a point so i'm going to use the uh, iron worker here and use the nibbler to just uh easily put a, a point on them and it should be sharp enough to punch the ground um, hope. Alrighty, here's what we're working on after a little bit of easy work we got some teeth built i'm hoping that i don't have to add a second point just so it doesn't want to pivot and um, spin off there but that should be simple enough I mean we're not moving the mountain here so it should be fine just enough to break up the dirt and uh, yeah all right so I just finished up my two time bars and I use the iron worker for that, punch in some half inch holes here, and uh, it's looking pretty good. Now I'm not sure about the angles, like if it's gonna be wider or narrower. Um, we gotta look at that because we wanna get our, uh, the distance between each tine needs to be right if we're gonna do this. So got all the seven teeth done right there, and now I'm working on where we're gonna put our seventh tine, if it's gonna be up here or maybe somewhere back here. So I believe we should be back at the farm in the next segment. Thanks for watching. Here we go. So we got most of the hard stuff out of the way. Right now we're working on the hitch receiver. Um, you can see we kind of got something cobbled together there and we're working on height adjustment. So that means how far down it's gonna sink into the ground. Um, as you can see, we got the rear on some two by fours to level out the hitch. So this is what it should look like when it's fully in the ground. And now we're gonna weld the hitch to the uh, time bar. Right here. Yep. 
So hopefully it works out good. All right, all the teeth tightened up, or sorry, teeth, all the tines tightened up, hitch is welded, and now we're putting in this brace bar between the two tine bars, which should strengthen up any uh, stress that may come. And uh, I'm thinking this is gonna work pretty good. Next up, welding this, and then putting the six teeth on. We still gotta figure out the seventh tine, because uh, obviously there's not one right there. Basically just got done with first test drive. Teeth need to be leveled. At the front two come in way too soon. Yeah, I think we need to level them all to where the back three are now. Yeah. All right, as you can see by looking at the new and improved version, we've done some imp improvised, we've improvised, I say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've added weight, clearly. And also what we've done is level out the teeth so they all touch at the same time, which I think, which, uh, we should have done that first. <laughs> yeah, should have done it when we first built it. But, you know, we didn't think about that. But it does still pick it up with the weight. And so, the weight goes over these too. Yeah. Weight kind of just slides in there. It fits good enough. So, let's go try it out. All right, let's do it. Oh. It would be a little better with just a little bit more weight, but it still works really good. You can see, I mean, we're in the ground a good three inches here, three or four. Easy to pick up and easy to set down too. So, yeah, before and after looks really good. Uh, we're into the ground like three or three and a half inches. So. Yeah, it, it, it goes down pretty deep. Yeah, it, can, uh, softens the ground. See really here, good. we're yeah, we're good. These things are about five, five and a half inches long, so they're good three and a half to four inches That's into the ground. Good. So, it does what it's supposed to. It's really good. Yeah, I'm impressed. This is working That's really good. Telling you. Oh yeah, so pull the root wad out. There's another one. Kind of got stuck. This is pretty cool. It's 
ready. Oh, it might do something. It's peeling the grass away, which last time it wasn't really doing. Yeah, because if you do multiple passes, it should start cutting into the ground. Yes, yes it will. Now just go over these lines again. It's like the same, a little bit, a little bit wider than the boat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, more of a part. Yeah, because the plow will cut it. figured out is if you just put a teeny bit of weight just literally press your finger to that outside right one the very far back one it actually will cut the dirt way better so it literally just needs like an extra couple pounds on the outside like 50 maybe this is the making of the thumbnail It cuts deeper and deeper with every pass because the ground gets softer. Let's just putt around and gets the job done. It's very, very good. Really good at soft ground. Hard ground, you have to pretty much cut through with a plow first and then go for the cultivator. Here he comes now, folks. All right, he's gonna try. It has a steering problem. Tires are pretty much full. Yeah, you can see grooves are full of mud. There we go. Nice raking turn. Since what we're, we're needing is those orange weights that were uh, on our plow setups uh, from a while back. That, no. Rock fell. Rock down. Rock down. Say goodbye. But it, it dug in for a while. It got in, so it protects itself. Yeah, yeah. The more you do that, the further it gets to the roots. Which is what I learned with the pulling the other ones. You can see we're pulling around it. I would say that's that point power. Though. Yeah, yeah. This little engine actually has enough to pull it, so I was a little worried about that before. I was kind of worried it wouldn't pull it. 
but it seems to do pretty good. So these five and a half horse Briggs motors, if you're gonna build one of these, Briggs motor, five and a half, not bad. Not bad at all. You don't need big V-twin power plants. Although it is nice, because you can go like 90 mile an hour and dig pretty deep, but uh, it's not, definitely not struggling. Definitely not struggling. <laughs> you don't need those anyway. Sorry, dog.